Hello everyone, Fixer here, and this is a quick review of the third week in A Tale in the Desert, Tale number 8. This video is going to cover everything from midday Friday, March 16th, until midday March 23rd. So the first thing I would like to mention in this video is that I am a member of the Hyksos faction, so their information shown in this video and all these videos is more likely to be not only accurate, but plentiful. I've got easy access to it. And because of the way factions are done, I do not have the same level of access to Meshwesh and Kush. And reporting on these can be difficult at times as my requests for information often go unanswered. And because of that, take some of the data in here for Meshwesh and Kush with a grain of salt and verify it for yourself. If you'd like to act as some sort of liaison for me from one of these two factions, feel free to contact me. Alright, let's get started with research. I'm not going to comment on old research, and in fact one change I'm making here is I'm going to dim the green of old completed technologies, and all the technologies that were completed in the last week will be in bright green. Meshwish and Hyksos have joined Kush in the Metal Age this week, both completing casting and blacksmithing. I suspect all three of them are moving on to Advanced Metallurgy 1. Ranching has come off of timer for Kush and Hyksos, Although, Kush had a one-day head start on that, and they're already attempting to breed cows and bulls. Kush was also able to unlock horticulture, which opens up flowers like sea lilies. This is a pretty popular aspect of the game for a lot of people. I never got into it myself. But if you're into crossbreeding and mutagenics, you should probably check this one out. Advanced blacksmithing brings us some new tools and uh, allows us to build anvils. It's worth noting that you only need blacksmithing to use an anvil, Advanced blacksmithing is just needed to build the anvil. Basic diplomacy lets us build a chancery. Not everything is known about this building as uh, we only got a brief look at it in the beta. We do know that if you build it in a region your faction does not own, you will get access to your faction chat. The building only stands for two weeks for as long as you do not control the region. So if the region is prone to flip-flopping with your faction, this building can actually stay up for a long time. And finally, basic chemistry. It makes way for the Fleet Furnace and Chemistry Lab. Fleet Furnace produces Quicksilver, which we need to make thermometers, which are needed in various Texan buildings, such as Trainiums and Greenhouses and Vault Kilns and many, many others. The Chemistry Lab lets us make arsenic, gunpowder, and ink, among many other things. Uh, these materials are used in dozens and dozens of tests in research and buildings. Alright, we're moving on to new tests unlocked this week. It's quite funny, last week after I unlocked the Test of Chains, we often joked about that somebody would make an error and unlock Test of Souls next. Oddly enough, that is exactly what happened. Jarnheim stopped by the University of Progress and accidentally unlocked the Test of Souls. So like the Test of Chains, Test of Souls is not a very good test. In fact, they're very similar tests. And the difference between the two is that with the Test of Souls, you try to predict which marriages will last. You get one pick per week, and betting works kind of like horse racing, in that you get more points for the lesser known marriages, as in marriages people did not pick for the test. If you're picking all the popular marriages, you will get fewer points. And the Test of Chains, longevity matters too, but the focus there is betting on couples that will advance in levels and tests over the course of a week. All bets for the Test of Souls and Change are done at an Essence of Harmony, and one was built in Hyksos, so you can go grab the test, head over to Hyksos, and place your bets for the week and participate in these tests. And finally, as a reminder, you should probably start spreading the word not to click on things willy-nilly at the University of Progress. The more people that know about this, the fewer mistakes that are going to happen. In fact, it would be even better to focus on demonstrating a test once the University of Progress is open to prevent this from happening at all. Alright, so that was the only test unlocked this week. Let's move on to some older tests. For the Test of the Elder, both Hyksos and Meshwesh have finally completed their Elder voting rounds. In Hyksos, Augur was voted as Elder over Tem. And for Meshwesh, Faith was voted over Mirtha. Moving on to the Test of the Singing Cicada, we had five advancements this week. I'm going to put them up on the screen. I was informed on Thursday that the price for a cage has gone down to five cicadas. 
people have been reporting a severe lack of cages out there. So if you have some bugs in your inventory right now, would probably be a good time to go out and buy your cage. All right, next up, the principles of thought. So we've had some quote unquote passes on the principle of thought. This is done to give you an alternative route to pass the principles yourself if you do not enjoy making the night sky table. I'll put the coordinates up here on the screen in case you would like to go play these puzzles and, and pass the principles. You only need to beat three of them in order to pass. And finally, there were no passes in Marriage or the Test of Chains, because there needs to be a minimum of seven days after the tests unlock. So we should see some of those passes in the next weekly update. Regions, of course, made a changeover once again on Sunday. If my memory serves, it was about one hour later than the previous Sunday. Meshwish made a strong push to gain some regions, putting a big dent in Hyksos, who lost eight regions overall. Kush lost two, and Meshwish themselves lost one. As far as acquiring regions, Hyksos gained three, Kush gained two, and Meshwish gained eight this week. And for total regions controlled, Hyksos has their hands on 12, Kush has 10, and Meshwish has 16. We had plenty of events over the past week. We're going to start with official events put on by the developer. We had the Day of the Duck, named after Mallard for it was his birthday. This was a about a full day event. Several birds spawned all over Egypt in the water. And clicking on one would give you the option to feed it scraps. And doing so would produce a watermelon seed. I'm going to put the three different types of seeds that we discovered up on the screen here. We discovered many different birds, uh, such as the mallard, pigeon, seagull, goose, silver, apple yard. Uh, you could only get one seed, though. If you found any other birds after the first one, all you could do is just stare at its majesty. But now watermelons have been introduced into the world. The next event was called Cheese, Please, and this had a little bit of story attached to it, where the assistant had ordered some cheese, and the deliveries ran into issues all across Egypt, and cheese packages spilled all over the place that are scattered all about. So we found many types of packaging and you needed to use a crowbar that could be obtained via fishing uh, to open these packages. And these crowbars were like a one-time use type of thing. So cheese so far appears to be a temporary and at times lengthy stat boost. It takes time to mature and, and various recipes can be discovered. According to Mallard, cheese is aimed at people who feel they're not good at cooking, but would like some way to boost their stats. If you're playing with this cheese mechanic and you find that you're enjoying it, you probably are going to be interested in wine making and uh, beer making as well. And there is one upcoming official event called Quarry Your Hearts Out. A quarry competition was put forth to each faction by their respective kings, Signups will be closed by the time you see this video. So teams of five will start preparing for the event on Friday and Saturday, and the actual dig event happens on Sunday at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. GMT, and it will last for two and a half hours. So keep in mind that some of you may be changing your clocks this weekend, and I'm going to put a link down in the description below at this timestamp for more info on this event. Prices are going to consist of cows, bulls, and the coveted pepper seeds. All right, we're moving on to player events. All events that I have listed here are being put on by Rabble. So if you're looking for more information, type the uh, slash info command in Egypt and look up Rabble. That's R-A-B-B-L-E. To start, events that happened this past week, there was a giant acro line as they usually are over at the Sharowin acro court in Bernanke. Mallard has kindly implemented a local chat for all acro courts. This allows players of all factions to participate in chats um, as long as they're within range of the acro court. It does appear that the region chat replaces your faction chat while you're inside of it. 
All right, we're moving into upcoming events for this week. Starting with today, Friday the 23rd, there is a bauxite dig at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, which is 10 p.m. GMT. I don't know if I'm going to have this video done in time for that, but I'm including it just in case. I'm going to put the coordinates up on the screen here, and the dig is going to be a mix of personal and research. Meaning a percent that is dug up is going directly to research, and the rest is going to the individuals personally. And then later on, there will be a cuttable dig. Also Friday, 10 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, which is 2 a.m. GMT. Coordinates are going to be on screen, and this is going to be near the Koptos chariot stop in upper egypt all cuttables are going to be for personal use and the event is going to last one hour moving on to saturday the 24th there will be a gypsum dig at 10 a.m u.s eastern time that would be 2 p.m gmt at the time of this recording the location has not been revealed and one final note about these digs of course make sure to bring your shovels but grilled onions can be helpful too to help make sure that the digs are successful and lastly, an acro line on Saturday, March 24th at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, which is 6 p.m. GMT. This will be held at the Sherwin Acro Field. Which leads me to chariots. The chariot from Sherwin to Koptos has now been repaired, so you no longer have to walk home after acroing for five hours. I didn't have enough time to visit every chariot stop this week like I wanted to. I'm going to aim to get that done soon, though. Peppers, we're still trying to figure out peppers. We don't know how to reliably reproduce these pepper seeds. It was first assumed that you needed plus two perception, but we have multiple reports of success with zero perception. Yarnheim of the Test of Souls fame hypothesized that there may be varying levels of success based on perception. For example, you may have a 50% success rate at zero perception and perhaps 100% uh, at seven perception. It's just speculation, and we're still trying to figure out how to reproduce these seeds. Okay, moving on. If you haven't noticed, the avatars in Egypt are kind of uh, stiff. They're more like mannequins. So on Thursday, it was revealed that the scientists of Egypt have discovered oxygen, and all players are now forced to breathe while idle. And now we have idle animations. I understand that it doesn't do anything as far as gameplay goes, but I think it's little additions like this that can go a long way to making the game feel more alive. Alright, finally we're moving on to the census, which I had completely omitted from last week's video. From this point forward, I'm going to be including the previous week's census in parentheses, so you can kind of gauge from week to week all the changes that are happening in Egypt. Currently, there are 662 permanent citizens. We have a few dozen students hopping and skipping around Egypt, and we even have three apprentices running around, all members of the University of the Human Body. And that seems to conclude my week three update. I didn't have any guilds to announce this week as none of them have contacted me. But there's my information anyways in case you do want your guilds name plastered all over this video. Or any news in general. If there's something that you think that Egypt would be interested in, don't be afraid to get a hold of me. I'd like to put it up here. And until next week, thank you guys for watching. We'll see ya. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.